Hey guys, I'm very excited for another episode of Showbot Science. This is your host, Nate. And today, we are going to do the best interview ever. It's with Tim Howard. He's worked on two of my favorite podcasts of all time. It's going to be an awesome episode, so stay tuned. So, Tim, could you introduce yourself? Yeah, you got it. My name is Tim Howard, and I am the editor of a podcast called Reply All. And I also used to be a reporter on a show called Radio Lab. Okay, so how did you start? How did I start? That's a good question. I had a very confusing path into doing what I do, but I was a musician and I wanted to try to get into radio. And I applied for an internship, which is when you work at a place pretty much for free, but you learn how to do it. And luckily, one of the people who worked on the show Radio Lab, she was a fan of my music. So that kind of gave me an advantage. And then they let me be an intern. And then from there, I became a reporter. And um, that's kind of how it started, like eight years ago. Why do you do what you do? I like to I like to be surprised and I like to discover new things about the world and it's very creative and you work with fun people and you're always trying to figure out the best way to explain stories and ideas to people and I like that a lot about it. How do you come up with ideas? Hmm. That's the hardest thing, to come up with ideas. So you have to talk to a lot of people, and you have to ask them what weird things they've heard about lately. You have to read a lot. We end up reading the newspaper a lot. A lot of it is just uh, somebody tells you a story, and it seems incredible, so you start looking into it, and you dig a little bit deeper, and then you find the whole thing. It takes a long time. And then the other thing is that you might spend a week or a month working on what you think is going to be a good story. And then halfway through, you decide, oh, this isn't going to work. And then you throw it away. So half of the way that you come up with ideas is by getting rid of things that aren't working and then moving forward. I see. That sounds like a fun job. Yeah, it is a fun job. Although it can be a little bit hard if you work on something for a while and you're excited about it, you think it's going to be a good story, and then you realize that it's not as exciting as you thought, and then you have to throw it all away. That can be kind of frustrating. But when you discover a really cool and weird story, like um, like the Zardulu story, then it's the most exciting thing in the world. That's funny that you mentioned that. Oh, yeah? Why's that? Because... Zardulu is one of my favorite episodes of Reply All, and so is the Glob Ghost from Radio Lab. Awesome. And I've listened to them both about 13,000 times. Oh my gosh. So in total, 26,000 times. Uh huh. Yeah, 26,000. You must know those stories so much better than I do at this point. I know them by heart. Wow, really? Really. But some of our listeners probably haven't heard those episodes. So could you tell them a little bit about the Galapagos episode from Radiolab? Yeah, you got it. So the Galapagos, it's an hour-long episode that I did for Radiolab, and it's about... It's about a bunch of different stories that are all happening in the Galapagos Islands. And the Galapagos Islands are really famous in the history of science because that's where Charles Darwin went and where he started to develop his ideas um, basically about how animals evolve. And I went there, and when I was there, I saw that it's actually a lot of people go there now and a lot of people live there. And there's a lot of controversy about that because when people move to a place, they bring a lot of changes and they change the environment. And so all of these animals that had lived in the Galapagos Islands without any outside interference at all for millions of years, all of a sudden their lives started to change. 
and some of the animals started to die. And so it's about the ways that that happened, the ways that the tortoises were affected and the ways that the finches were affected. Like there's, the, um, I don't know if you remember, there's like this story about how Darwin finches, they were attacked by this fly. Yeah. Is it, yeah, it, it snuck in somehow. Yeah, I think it's called like Flornis Downsy. Do you just spell Flornis Downsy? That's Robert Krolwich, one of the hosts of Radio Lab. Yeah, it's P H I L. I can't spell out loud. Philor. L O R N I S D O W N S I. Okay. Philonis actually means bird loving. That's Uh, Charlotte Costin. She's a researcher. At the Charles Darwin Foundation. She says there's actually very little known about the fly. They're not sure where it came from or quite how it got here, but here's what they do know. What it does is it it crawls into the nest of the finches, and when the finches are tiny little babies, it like crawls up into their beaks, like their noses. And it eats them, and so it's really dangerous. It's a zombie fly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and then the other story was about Lonesome George, who was the last of his kind, who was living on this island called Pinta. Yep, Pinta Island tortoise. Yeah, and I got a chance to see Lonesome George. I don't think it's in the episode, but... It's not in the episode. Yeah, it's not in the episode. We tried to fit it in the episode, but there's too much. But he went to a museum here in New York after he died, and they stuffed him to preserve him. And so I got a chance to go see him, and that was really kind of cool and kind of sad. So could you tell me about Zardulu and what it is? Zardulu is an episode from the show that I work on now, Reply All. And basically, some weird things had happened in New York. It got a lot of attention. And one of them was that a rat was seen on video dragging a slice of pizza down the stairs in the New York subway. And it got really famous. And after Pizza Rat came Selfie Rat. Let's hear a clip. Zardulu took the video and sent it to a Connecticut TV station posing as someone called Don Richards. And that's how Selfie Rat was born. And it was everywhere. For a couple days, it became the weird news story on the 11 o'clock news all over the country. It was blurry, and you couldn't tell that it was Eric, but the video was seen millions of times. In the process, he dropped his cell phone, which somehow snapped a photo of the imposing critter. Richards caught the whole thing on video, and now the sleeping man has a forever memento of selfie rat. This is an episode about a person who's sort of a an artist of sorts, a mysterious person who apparently orchestrated the whole thing. Like she trained the rat how to do it. And then she orchestrated other tricks like that to make it seem like the rats are somehow, I I don't know, to basically create these uh, characters in the imaginations of the people who live in New York. And the episode is about us wondering about who she is and trying to figure out what she is capable of doing, how powerful she is. And it was a really fun story. Can I ask you, what is it about those stories that got you so excited to keep listening? So the one thing that hooks me about Zardulu is it just, it's suspenseful and it gives you all these clues about what's real and what's not. Right. And all the things in between. Mystical is a weird word, but that's how she (laughs) seems somehow. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Do you have a theory about this Ardulu story? Well, it depends what you say by theory. Uh Uh-huh. I guess I mean... Do you think that Zardulu is behind all of these things? I do think that she is behind Pizza Rat because Selfie Rat is complex. Pizza Rat is easy. So you start small with Pizza Rat, 
go to selfie right. rat. Then it's like rat mo- riding a motorcycle. Then it's like rat president. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's smart. Pizza rat is simpler. Selfie rat is more complex. But do you think that Zardulu is responsible for selfie rat? I do. Yeah? I do. I also think she's responsible for pizza rat. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Do you think Zardulu is responsible for more things that we don't even know about? I do. I think she's probably planning one right now. Yeah. What do you think she's like? Um, I would think if I could meet her, then I would think she would be nice but kind of inscrutable. Yeah, yeah. Inscrutable. Tell me what you mean when you say that. I have no idea. It's just a quote from the episode. (laughs) Um, It's funny. I think that it means like somebody who you don't know what they're thinking. You can't tell if they're planning something big or if they're just trying to plan the next step. Yeah. And you said you also got hooked on the Galapagos episode? Yes, the Galapagos episode. What caught your attention about the Galapagos episode? I'm curious. Well, when they started talking about the goats on Isabella and all of that and Lonesome George, I thought that all of that was very interesting somehow. So, I've got a question. How do you go about making an episode in the Galapagos? Is it hard? Yeah, that's a good question. Okay, so I wanted to do this story that took place in the Galapagos. And the Galapagos is really far away. I live in New York, and... It's really hard to get there, and I didn't think that I would necessarily be able to convince my bosses to let me go there because it would cost a lot of money, and I would be out of the office for a lot of time, but the fortunate thing was that I got married in 2013, and me and my wife, we wanted to take our honeymoon which is like the vacation that you take when you get married. We wanted to take our honeymoon in Ecuador. And the Galapagos is not their part of Ecuador. And so because I was already going to Ecuador and we were going on vacation there, I was able to convince my boss to let me fly to Galapagos. And um, so they let me go there and I spent five days And I interviewed as many people as I could. And actually, the weird thing about the Galapagos is that it's so many different islands. And they're really far away from each other. So it takes a long time to get from one to the other. So I wasn't able to go to all these islands, but I was able to talk to scientists who know all these islands. And I talked to them. I spent five days there in Galapagos. I went to two different islands. And then I came back to New York, and then I did a lot more interviews. And then we took three more months or so to edit them down and figure out how to tell the stories in that episode. Thanks, Tim. It's been so much fun talking to a fellow science podcaster. It's really interesting hearing how you put your stories together. And I really loved getting to share my favorite episodes of Radio Lab and Reply All with my listeners. How can people find out more about the shows that you work on? Let's see. I think the best way. So now I work on Reply All, and you can go to what is the easiest way? Reply All dot limo l i m o. That's our website, and then you can you can hear all our shows there. Or if you listen to podcasts on your phone, like on iTunes, you can just look up Reply All, 
And then maybe we maybe tell people just to start with our doodle because that's your favorite episode. And uh, it was really fun to talk to you, Nate. It was really fun to talk to you too, Tim. And if you want to listen to the Galapagos from Radio Lab, then you can go to radiolab.org. And speaking of Radio Lab. Hi, this is Robert Krolowicz from New York City. I'm calling in to read the credits. The show about science is produced by Nate Butkus. Our staff includes Eric and Jenny Butkus, with help from Emily Shapiro and Ilana Milner at PINA. Very, very special thanks to Soren Wheeler at Radio Lab, to everybody at Reply All and the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. Original music on the show about science was written by Jeff and Teresa Brooks. Okay, that's it. End of message. There you have it, folks. The show about science is complete. But just so you know, Radio Lab and Reply All are podcasts for adults, but some episodes are cool for kids too. So make sure your parents listen first. Dad, you can shut the recording off. For the newest episodes of the show about science, download the PIN app or go to pinna.fm slash promo.